Country Biker here. Today we're going to take a ride and I'm going to talk to you about some of my early days of riding and about my first motorcycle and stuff like that. Uh, but before we get started, I'm going to ask you to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, like, sharing, and subscribing helps my channel out, helps support me. Uh, there's other ways to support me as well. If you really want to get involved, go into the video description. I got uh, other social media channels. I've got an Amazon wish list. And we'll get going here in just a second. Today's ride uh, was recorded on May 30th, 2022. The video is starting just outside of Harvard, Illinois. Uh, it's where I realized that my camera wasn't recording. And we're going to go to Rockford. On this particular day, I was actually going to uh, meet up with a uh, young lady. And uh, we went for a ride, had lunch, all that fun stuff. This video will end before, uh, before we meet her, though. So, we'll start where it all begins, when I was a child. When I was a child, I was absolutely obsessed with three things. Four things. The Muppets, Dukes of Hazard, Transformers, and Chips. Chips really got in there. Watching these cops on their KZ-1000Ps riding all over California, seeing the scenery porn, which was not a term I had until I was an adult, which an easy rider, um, was fantastic. I couldn't get enough of them watching these guys ride around. And then you throw in the uh, good old boy of wildness of the Dukes of Hazard, and I was just like predetermined that I'd be on the bike. Now we're just going to jump ahead to 2004 because, I mean, obviously it was something I was always obsessed with. There was always something or someone on a bike that I always wanted to emulate. But then I got into, you know, my early 20s, you know, I was trying to formulate a plan to get a bike and couldn't quite figure it out. I didn't know how to ride. I didn't really have any friends that rode. Um, so it was a kind of a, a strange world for me to figure out. But finally, I just kind of put my foot down and said, I've got to get my bike. I know I need to be on the bike. I mean, I drive my truck at, you know, all over the place just to get out there and be out there. It's got to be the best thing in the world to be out there on a bike. So I went to my aunt. I uh, convinced her to lend me you know, four grand, maybe a little bit more, and I went up and bought my first bike. I had one of my co-workers who rode, ride it down from the, the bike shop to my house for me. He gave me the quick rundown on the clutch, which I had driven a stick shift truck on a few occasions, but I hadn't ridden a motorcycle. And um, on my lunch break, I crashed the bike into the back of my garage. So, I was off to a great start. Another side note on this, I was still living with my folks at the time. I was still uh, a young man living with my folks. And uh, my mother had told me, if I get a motorcycle, she was throwing me out of the house. So, I was uh, in a relationship at the time. I had made sure I had a place to stay with the girl I was seeing, who ultimately became my ex-wife, and uh, before I purchased the motorcycle, to make sure I had a place to go should things not go as I had planned. So yeah, I went up to the bike shop. It was a place called Honda House of Elmhurst, and I came home with my myself with a 2001 Suzuki Intruder 1400. Um, the previous owner, whoever had brought it up to Honda House of Elmers, was either a genius or an idiot because the day I got it home, I had to rewire it. 
the headlight had gone out, which was no big deal, but I called the bike shop and I asked if there's something they could do about it, and they said, no, you bought it, it's your problem. They weren't going to do anything to help me out with something I had just brought home several hours early, earlier, and I decided, you know what, these guys, I'm never going to do business with them again. Uh, I went to change the bulb, and I noticed that there was all sorts of wiring issues. Matter of fact, the light bar that was on it was made out of this weird aluminum square bar and was definitely handmade. I had noticed that before I bought the bike, I didn't think anything of it. But there was all sorts of crazy wiring things going on on the bike. And if you're curious, I did not get booted out of the house after all. So I spent the first day or so with the bike basically never leaving my driveway. I would roll down the driveway and then I would just work the clutch coming back up so I understood how it worked. It didn't always go according to plan, but I got a hold of it pretty, pretty quickly, uh, going into first gear and starting off the line at least. After a few hours on day two, I decided I needed to start exploring the neighborhood. You know, I wasn't going on any major streets, just staying on the side streets. I stalled it plenty of times, but I also went up to the church parking lot to play around. So I believe it was the second day I was going up to the church parking lot. Mrs. Foley, who had been uh, my CCD teacher, which is like Sunday school if, uh, if you don't know, uh, almost took me out with her car pulling in the parking lot during off hours and cussed me out for fooling around in the parking lot. So after another day or two of just going around the neighborhood, I thought it was time for me to explore. And I went to my buddy's house who lived in the next town over by the mall. And I got over there without incident, but I also didn't quite understand the whole downshifting situation. But I rode over there just to say hi, hang out for a little bit, but I also had to come home. And that's where the adventure was. So I leave my buddy's house and I'm headed back home and I decide I'm Mr. Ryder now. I'm going to get on the six lane highway. I'm, you know, three lanes going one way, three lanes going the other. And I get on there without incident. And I'm riding along. And I've never really downshifted the bike properly. I'd get to a stoplight or a stop sign. And I would stop, come to a complete stop. And I would shift to first. And then I would start from a dead stop. And I was pretty decent at starting from the dead stop. Well, I'm coming along and I'm pulling up to a red light and I'm slowing down and the light changes to green and I'm like oh I gotta go and I stall the bike on the downshift coming up and the bike jerks 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 and I get a semi truck barreling down on me. I kind of got into a panic, but I had the wherewithal to get the bike into neutral and get the bike started again. I put the bike, popped the bike straight into second rather than first, and all turned out well. That truck did get really close to my ass, but all worked out in the end, right? I didn't get ran over like it could have been. And that's when I realized I need some proper training. And I decided I was going to take the uh, riders class, the motorcycle safety class, through the Harley shop because I wanted to take it now, and that cost me three hundred and some odd dollars. That was a couple weeks before the Harley shop could get me into one of their classes. So I was still riding the bike around. I would take it to work. I didn't go on any major highways after my previous incident. If 
but I figured out the downshifting situation. I was something I started practicing as I was going about because I wanted to get it down. Well, those couple weeks pass and I finally get to the riding class at the Harley shop. And I'll tell you, I've taken the safety class through the Harley shop and I've taken it through the nonprofit. And let me tell you, the nonprofit is the way to go. The first day of the Harley shop, or actually the first half of the two classroom days through the Harley shop, is basically trying to sell you a Harley and sell you Harley gear, which is not what I needed, right? I already had my bike. I was ready to rock and roll. What was nice about taking the class to the Harley shop was you got a huge discount, and I can't remember what it was, off of Harley merchandise uh, one day while you were there, right? So I bought gloves, bought glasses, bought a t-shirt, uh, bought a cover for my intruder. I just bought a cover for a Dyna, which fit my intruder, and that worked out nicely. I bought a bunch of stuff on clearance and was able to get all the gear that I needed off of it. I already had a helmet that I had been wearing for a bit. So did the class, and like I said, I had been riding for a little bit, so I was already had some uh, understanding, was doing pretty good. And they put us on these Buell Blast 650s, which were a ton of fun, by the way. If I ever find one at the right price, I will pick up one for fun. But I uh, had a couple guys in my class that were also, well, more experienced riders than I was. And then we had the, pe the people who have never ridden before in the class as well, which is cool, right? And, I mean, I know a little feller, as you can see when these uh, cameras panning like this now. And I was able to take these uh, fuels, and I was able to lean them enough that I was able to scrape my boots on them, right? Like... These things, these things are responsive, and they were sweet, 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 sweet rides. Yeah, when we would end exercises, the uh, instructors would allow the guys, the couple of us that knew how to ride already a little bit, they'd let us have a little bit of extra freedom, putting the bikes away, and let us kind of hot dog just a tiny bit in the parking lot, not doing wheelies or anything like that, but just giving a little more oomph than. Uh, the class had been ready for. A couple guys on the side of the road, they were all good. They were just discussing what they were doing. But as always, we always pull over and check on any other riders when they're on the side of the road to make sure everybody's good. These guys were good, so I just carried on. Probably the most memorable thing in the writing class to me was uh, breaking in a turn. We were doing uh, the breaking in a turn where like, you had to straighten the bike out before you broke at the line. And I kept getting my wrist slapped for anticipating the stop and anticipating the stop and anticipating the stop. Right? And I'm like, of course I'm anticipating the stop. I know it's coming. Well, they give, they're giving me the business and I go hard. And I goose that gas and I take off from the line and I'm waiting for the absolute last second and I overbrake and I go over the bars to the point that my hands are able to touch the ground in front of me but the bike, like I do an endo and the bike stands itself back up right though. When my, when my hands touch the ground to brace my, myself as I went over but all ended up well and the instructor was like, that was awesome. Don't ever do that again. Now, as soon as that exercise finished, we got uh, we had a problem where bikes were running out of gas. The the youth bikes that the class had, and they called the Harley shop and the ice cream truck, as they used to call it, which you can see right around the neighborhood by us, 
was not available to run gas over to uh, the, the, the practice range, which was in a different space. So the one instructor comes up to me and asks me, because I was driving a pickup truck, if I could run to the Harley shop and pick up uh, this little portable pump thing they had and, you know, bring it over. And I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem, right? I got, I got it, no problem. I'll go do it real fast because it's not that far away. So I jump in my truck and I go to take off. And the other instructor comes flying up to me. He's like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. He's like, are you quitting? Don't quit just because you went over the bars. I'm like, no, I'm not quitting. I'm just going to get gas because he thought I was quitting because I went over the bars. And that was not the case. And I just So I ran up to get the gas for the heart for the... In the class so that we could keep going and I got back I missed like one or two things but it was all stuff that I didn't need to really worry about too much that I was already like doing fine with so the class wrapped and uh I took my test on site there to pass the class. Uh, if you pass the class through the Harley shop, you still have to take the DMV test in Illinois. Uh, if you take it through the nonprofit, there's nothing else to do. Another reason to take it through the nonprofit, not through the Harley shop. But I passed the Harley version of the class, perfect writing, perfect written. And uh, then a few days later, uh, I took the uh, DMV test. And uh, the heart way, you, if you do it with the Harley shop, you get to do it on the Harley bike still, the uh, mules. And uh, I got one point off on the DMV test because my rear tire just barely clipped a cone in the slalom, but the cone shot straight up in the air. And the DMV guy told me, I don't have to mark that, but I'm gonna mark that because it doesn't look good when I turn in per uh, perfect tests. So I ended up moving out of my folks' house right around the time I took the uh, Harley class. I moved in with my ex-wife, uh, well, my soon-to-be ex-wife, and, uh, you know, was living up there for a while. We're going to fast forward a little bit to October, and the Harley shop's putting on a ride for its former students from the safety class, and I really want to go. But I go out to start the bike, and the bike won't start. And I'm like, ah, oh, what the heck, right? Well, I'm going to push start it, right? I've had people tell me about push start the bike. I can do this. So I get outside. I put my bike in the parking lot of the apartment complex I'm living in. And I get next to it. And I grab the handlebars. And I am standing on the left side of the bike. So my, the bike is to my right. And I get running with this thing. And I jump and I slam it into first gear and I and it kicks off and it fires up and I slip and I miss the clutch and I goose the throttle and the bike takes off on me and I'm with it and it goes a few feet up falls on its side on its right my right as well and I fall on top of it and the wheel is still running the rear wheel is still running and it literally tear, rips my pants to shreds. Didn't rip my body up too bad, you know, beat me up a little bit. But had I had a chain drive instead of the shaft drive that I had on the Suzuki, I probably would have lost my leg because I really, really wanted to go on that ride. December and it's my first year riding and I decide I'm going to do the Toys for Tots parade in Chicago which is a big deal right so 
I get up early. I ride from, uh, I was living in Arlington Heights at the time, down to where the parade starts at the uh, Dan Ryan Woods, which is an hour and change to get there. It's December, but it's a beautiful day in December. And I get down there for the, for the parade, and they're lining people up, and there's just a ton of people there. And they're queuing us up, and I get put into a parking lot, and they tell me that my queue probably is not going to leave for several hours until about noon, and it's probably six in the morning, seven in the morning when I'm lining up. And I'm like, this is horrible, right? Like the last thing I want to do is hang out here for hours, not doing anything. But I'm in the parking lot, and I'm talking to people, and I'm talking to this group, and I hear Armageddon coming through, and it is a dude on a freaking boss hoss, and. It is the most beautiful machine I've ever seen, right? This is this is the goal bike for me right now, is a boss hoss. But anyhow, I'm talking to these dudes, and they're like, yeah, we come here every year, and when we come, we stage in this parking lot. And what we do is we wait till the parade gets going, and we just go. We take off, we go up the ways a little bit, and uh, we just merge into the parade. They're like, just, just come with us. So I'm like, okay. So we're sitting there, and we hear the first wave of bikes go by, and they take off, and we take off shortly afterwards. And we go riding, and we go past Western Avenue, which is where the parade takes place, go up a few blocks, and then we come back, and we rode on the sidewalk for about a block or so, and just went onto the parade route, we just merged onto the parade route, and just you know, Bruce Dennett. So yeah, I'm rolling through the parade. I'm rolling through the parade and it's slow going, right? Again, not the most experienced rider, so I'm probably working my clutch more than I should have to. And it's a hydraulic clutch. And then suddenly, I have no clutch. I don't know exactly what happened. It happened a few times with this bike afterwards, but this is the first time it happened. But I've got no clutch. And I don't know what to do. So I pull over and I open up the master cylinder and I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, something's going on. And there's a Napa right around the corner. So I go around the corner to the Napa. I buy a bottle of. Uh, hydraulic fluid, not hydraulic fluid, brake fluid, because it's a hydraulic clutch, and I essentially just change out hydraulic fluid right there on the, the, the course. Not, not a full bleeding, but I, uh, yeah, I didn't do, get a whole lot done, but it helped. And what was happening was the hydraulic fluid would overheat and then it would just become not effective. I must have water or something in the hydraulic fluid. I took care of it down the road about a year or so later and figured out what to do. But despite my best efforts, I didn't quite get it right and my clutch would get wonky during the ride. So I just pull over and let it cool for a bit and then I could ride again. But the last stretch of this thing, you're riding Motorman, you know, side by side for a while uh, as you're lining up to go into the uh, base where it's held. And my clutch is going wonky, right? I've barely got any clutching and stuff and we're side by side and I'm basically going no clutch first to neutral to first to neutral until we get into the base and once we get in we're almost to where it's about to go and I go to turn into a parking lot where there's bikes parked but I can't you know like I have to I'm supposed to go up further and it's definitely not supposed to be an enter there and I go to turn in there and a guy stops me and I'm like dude my clutch is going I need to stop now before I hurt somebody and the dude's like yeah go go just park over there by the porta potties and I rolled in and I parked at the part of bodies and I killed the bike. And uh, 
I went about walking around the around the thing. After uh, after spending some time there, I uh, jumped on the scooter. I rode it to my mom's house because my parents also split while I, in that time period, and uh, put it parked it in her garage for the winter. So winter passes, and I go and pick up my bike, and I'm riding around, you know, quite a bit. I work in uh, the same town I grew up in, near where both my parents live, and I live in a town called Arlington Heights, and I'm going back and forth to work and every day and this and that and the other thing. And uh, one day, I just stopped to, decided to stop by my dad's house after work, and uh, I'm talking with him, hanging out with him, and you know, just jaw jacking and all that, and uh, and I had two beers while I was there. You know, not the best decision, but not the worst decision of my life, right? Like, two beers isn't a problem. But I decided I gotta go. I gotta take off. I gotta get home to my uh, fiance at the time, now my ex-wife. And I jump on the scooter and I get going. And I'm cutting through an industrial park. And in this industrial park, there's no marked lanes, but the road is basically three lanes wide. Basically, your right lane, your left lane, and a middle turn lane kind of situation, right? So I'm rolling along, and uh, I'm behind a truck, a pickup truck pulling a landscape trailer. And the landscapers throw on their left turn signal and move to the middle of the, the road. I'm like, ah, screw it. I'm just gonna pass them on the right, right? I'm just gonna go past them. Well, these guys make a right turn. And I've got nowhere to go because the curb is too high for me to jump. And now their truck is sideways in front of me. And I cut the wheel and I managed to, as it falls, get my knee and my shin up on the seat. And I surfed the front wheel underneath the rear wheel of that pickup truck. And that rear wheel of their truck rolled over my front wheel on the bike. And the bike came up and every spoke on that front wheel snapped and the bike came back down and it slammed us down and when it kind of bounced my leg went underneath it and I got pinned underneath it which wasn't too big a deal because the dudes popped out of that truck and uh, they came running over and they helped me out and they lifted the bike up and they helped me out and they picked me up and they're like freaking out I'm relatively calm and they're like Oh my god, oh my god, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, man. I'm going to be okay. And they're like, do you want to call the cops? And I'm like, no, I don't want to call the cops because I've had a couple beers in me and I didn't have insurance. And I'm like, do you guys want to call the cops? And they're giving me a look. And I'm like, okay, well, these guys aren't from around here, so they don't want the cops to come by. And I'm like, can you guys just help me put the uh, bike on the corner and uh, on the curb, on the grass, and I'll... You know, I called my ex-wife to bring my pickup truck. I called the, my dad and a couple other guys to come over, and we lifted it up into the bed of my truck. Took the bike over to my dad's house, and over the course of a couple a couple weeks, every day after work, I'd work on the tank because the tank got dented. And I'd sand it and I repainted the tank. I got a new front wheel, was able to put it on it, and get the bike back on the road in a couple weeks, right? So. Not a great situation, but it could have been a heck of a lot worse. So that's like taking us to about where the end of my first year of writing would be. It was uh, mostly spent commuting to and from work and riding around town. I didn't really get out too far uh, during my first year of writing. And mostly because I just wanted to make sure I got comfortable and I got safe. But I did learn a lot in that first year, and I did put on a lot of miles, even though it's all within probably a 30 mile radius, maybe even less than that. I'd say probably even a 20 mile radius, uh, now that I'm thinking about it. But it was a good, good education. Uh, I mean, I learned to work on my bike quite a bit. I learned uh, how to handle situations when I'm out riding. It was, a, it was a very good first year.
So guys, that's about going to do it. We're just a couple turns away from the young lady's house, and as per my usual, I will not show you how to get into somebody's house through the neighborhoods and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to ask you again to please like, share, and subscribe before we uh, sign off. Sharing is huge, uh, so that I can get some followers. It's right, watching writing videos that aren't talking about club topics is a hard art audience to crack, so I would appreciate your help uh, sharing. And uh, let me know what things you want to talk about. Again, there's so many creators out there that talk about clubs and stuff like that, but I'm not in a club. It's not my place to talk about clubs, so, you know, that's, that's not something I'm going to talk about very often. You know, there's an, a, a sentence or two here or there. Uh, I did do one video where I spoke about a club guy, but that was about the guy, not about clubs. But yeah, I'll uh, catch you guys on down the road. Bye. See ya.